So if you're able to keep up with those, you'll be able to like zoom in.
Now working. Okay. So, um, I'm, I'm delighted that uh, Rimshi is here. Uh, again, to give us instruction uh, for those who uh, had the good fortune to have this initiation empowerment. I'd like to mention that um, people can learn more about Rimshi. His background and his activities by learning about Tashi Chekcholing from his monastery in Amdam, which is I've had the fortune to visit over the years. I haven't been able to visit since 2015, so I'm hoping he can visit again because he's constantly in contact with him. We have a, a Facebook and, and a website. I've done a number of different activities. This day, over the years, which I've attended and enjoyed. So, uh, MJ's responsibilities are to be a professional spread in India and here in the United States. <laughs> More delighted that his availability and his kindness, his teachings that uh, come from both experience. Lineage and from logic and authority. So I asked him to do uh, teaching American style. So <laughs> American style is, of course, we'll do this on and every length of time for questions and going back and asking them how to do things and going over how to do the 
to remove this. It's a virtual part, so we can make it not only uh, part of them uh, here, uh, again, in Dargy, but something we also do at home. So uh, uh, we also have uh, people living uh, in video land. Is it possible to uh, have the text on one of the screens and have the people on one of the screens? Yes, we, yeah, give it a try. Also, all fun sharing is here. So, um, teachings from teacher Twitter that they share. So, <laughs> yeah, I knew I was going to call you out. I knew I was going to call you out. So, uh, would you like us to do press first? Do you do press? Or? So uh, maybe uh, we will say that they would be out of Budapest, Greece, and the uh, taking refuge in the uh, Bodhicitta press. Teacher, photo destroyer, dust on. Fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, on to bliss, know of the world, thousand of ordinary beings retain, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, boat destroyer, glorious victorious one, shall community, to pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, boat destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, out with knowledge and good conduct, on to bliss, knower of the world, helms of an ordinary beings to attain, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, O destroyer, glorious victorious one, Jakimini, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, O destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, on to bliss, Know of the world, comes in ordinary beings to be tamed. Supreme One, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, O destroyer, glorious victorious one, Chakamini, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. When you, chief of humans, were born, you took seven steps on this great earth and you said, I am supreme in this world. To you, who are wise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, supreme protector to you I prostrate. Endowed with the supreme marks, face like the stainless moon, a color like gold, to you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you, who is free from dust. Nashless one, endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate. Protector endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, feel devotion like merits and good qualities, to the thus gone I prostrate. The purity, free from attachment, through virtue, releases from the evil gone realms, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning, to the Dharma that brings peace I prostrate. From freedom, teaching the path, well abiding in the pure trainings, holy field endowed with good qualities, to the Sangha also, I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma refuge, homage to the great Sangha, to all three, ever the God homage. To all worthy of respect, armed with bodies as many as all realms, atoms, and all aspects. The Supreme Faith, I pay homage. Do not commit any non virtuous action, accumulate virtue and goodness. Subdue so your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning, and clouds. Look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to this merit, having attained the state of the all seeing, and thereby subduing the enemy of faults, may I liberate migrators from the ocean of existence, 
stirred by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. I take refuge in the Guru, I take refuge in the Buddha, I take refuge in the Dharma, I take refuge in the Sangha, I take refuge in the Guru, I take refuge in the Buddha, I take refuge in the Dharma, I take refuge in the Sangha, I take refuge in the Guru, I take refuge in the Buddha, I take refuge in the Dharma, I take refuge in the Sangha, I take refuge in Thailand and Lion, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the positive potential I crave by listening to the Dharma, may I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. Let's do two more points. I take refuge in telling and lighting in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the positive potential I crave by listening to the Dharma, may I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. I take refuge in telling and lighting in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the positive potential I crave. I listen to the Dharma, may I attain goodhood in order to benefit all sentient mm. Okay, good morning, everybody. Mm. So today uh, we, will, we will talk about the, the uh, Buddha Amitayu's uh, practice called self generation, right? So dark jail, self generation. Uh, self generation. Right? But then called dark chi. Dark means self, chi means generated. So dark chi. So, Any deity's practice when we do, so we do the self generation practice. So here we have a book, right? So be before, before we uh, start from that, the, uh, this uh, book, this book, uh, I will, I will, how to say, I will uh, try to, how to say, lay down the, uh, how to call it, and general the uh, a Buddhist, uh, how to say, general Buddhist uh, view, and also uh, the tantric and sutra what the different and so what's important for those things I will try to uncover. So it's a Lamala Lamala let me know if I go too far that you can stop me, okay? okay. <laughs> Uh, so before we go into the, uh, the main topics, uh, first of all, I would like to give some general presentation on Buddhist teaching and the uh, practices. Uh, it begins with the cultivating right motivation. So in um, in general presentation in terms of both sutra and tantra, it is really uh, important to have a right motivation uh, in the first place. Mm. So any practice that we do in a sutra or tantra, the benefit of that practice or the ultimate result of that practice really determines by what kind of motivation one have cultivated first. 
Ben Sashawaina, Tanga Dupena, and Saba Megi Tangero, the Punchini, Kumdur, Chirachi Raina, Chiba Montana, Takunu, the Nitsi Dirangi, Tamlodoti, Chimichi, you cigarette, Nitawa Chimigi Tendu, Chime, you cigarette, Nit Habat Habatovich do it, you cigarette, and it, yeah, Sanjay Kumatovich do it, and they shed the young cigarettes, Sakunu Midawa Shim Guris. For example, so uh, for example, this practice of amitayus. So let's say they uh, they can be a uh, different uh, kinds of practitioners who have different kinds of motivations corresponding to this greater practice. For uh, such as they might be a practitioner who have, uh, I mean, who is doing this practice solely to benefit in this very lifetimes. And they can be a practitioner whose motivation of doing this practice for the benefit of next gen, next life, of future life. Or a person, they can be a person who's doing this practice to achieve a liberation, nirvana. And, and also like, I mean, this is possible that they can be a practitioner who's doing this practice solely to achieve uh, the complete enlightenment. Hey, in that, kunung kunungi chaber onge ta pena se ditam chigi thendo chine ni yamle do chaba ina ta chidangi dam chune chaba ina ta ko chue thende chagi yomaris. Ah, therefore, like uh, so based on those four different practitioners, like if you pick the first one, who is doing this practice. To just to gain benefit for this very lifetime. Therefore, in terms of the like a uh, Buddhist point of view, such practice cannot be considered as a, a genuine a Dhamma practice. And you mantalaya and it nangbe church of song a la and it has a good kunga check chuti and it therefore in order to be uh in order to be considered as a, a, a dharma practice the least requirement is is that motivation has to be uh for the next life mm. Uh, so the, the any practitioner whose motivation of doing such a practice is to aiming for the future life or next life, then such uh, such type of practice we consider as a category of of a small scope of practitioners. Mm. So whereas a, a practitioner who uh, who is aiming to achieve uh, uh, aiming to achieve a liberation from the sufferings for oneself, uh, then that kind of practice is categorized as a middle scope of practice. Mm -hmm. So whereas a person or practitioner who has a greater capacity of motivation where one encompass all the sentient being and for their sake I'm practicing this teaching in order to get enlightenment on the behalf of all sensory beings. And then that kind of practice categorized as a Mahayana teaching or the greater scope of uh, a greater scope of the practice. Mm -hmm. Ninja Hagodan Chimbuchin, Akanda two in the Vimbu, 
क्योंकि कैबास कर सो रहे कैबास में लसो बोलो सौ साल है मतलब हर जगह ठीक बना रहा शेयर के फिर कैबास में लसो बोलो यार अने आसिन ने सौ साल ने इंसान जी कमाल तो बच्चा हुई नहीं बस चलिए कि चुरी दे तो कर सो रहता सिम ने कर सो रहता फिर जिन्दे जो लोग जो लाव है ना ये सिम जो निम्मा � नर्क दोस्त हैं खंडर कुल उस खबर देने शुभ चिंब शुभ चिंबो चेंडे खंडर आज ये कुमार उनको चेंडे ने न्यूनतम ये तो थोप चेंडे कुल उस कुल उस शुभ चेंडे कुल उस नागे सो नाउ दिस दोस फॉर लाइक आई मीन दोस आर द जनरल प्रेजेंटेशन इन एक्सोर्डेंस विथ द पंचपरिम दोस आर लाइक सूत्रस प्रेजेंटेशन एक्सोर्डे� uh, uh, parameter systems and now particularly in this context refers to Amitayus, right? Amitayus practice and this considered as a Tantra practice. So therefore as a Tantric practitioner uh, uh, whose motivation has to be greater than the previous ones. So now in, uh, in terms of uh, not not just uh, altruistic motivations. Uh, uh, on top of that, one must have an urgency to achieve enlightenment uh, right now in order to benefit all sentient beings. Uh, whereas in the, uh, uh, in the parameters uh, uh, system, so like the practitioner cultivated for three great eons of collecting merits, to achieve Buddhahood in order to benefit our sentient beings. But now in the Sutra, there is a great urgency because I don't, I cannot bear the sentient being who are suffering for great eons of time, right? That's a dura. Uh, whereas um, there's a great sense of urgency to achieve Buddhahood right now so that I can benefit the sentient being right now, right? Uh, mm -hmm. तब कौन अने चिंबू जी को भी देता संजय ठंजे के तंजो आगे ना वहाँ तो बस रहा संजय को बात तो बात चाहो नहीं तो कौन ये बात तंजो मारें बा ये न्यू वन्यू वन्यू न्यू वन्यू वन्यू ये रिंगो तंजो सिंगे अने देख बिचो देता कर सिंग की सिंपल हो चुकी है को भी सो सो विद दिस लाइक अ फ all mother sentient being, I want to achieve enlightenment very swiftly, swiftly now so that I can benefit all sentient beings. I don't know the top that they have in a car so much and you send big Argentina and it's on down the and you send big car so it's a sentry to the new court in my song with the cook had lower down. जो तंगोर मांगा चिंगे तो वो खंडर चिंगे तो तंग तो अने सेम्पू ये जब तो वो ना अगर नियम नहीं चेंज तो को जोलम जिते जी जो जो तो तब जी तंग ये कर सको रहे कर ले तब जोलम से हो रहा था जोलम तो जिते जी चेंडा मांगो जी योर जी चुम्बजा जान दूँगी उस तो तो जी तंग तो तो ये मुझे नहीं चेंडे म so there is like uh, uh, like uh, um, so when we like uh, uh, sometimes it's possible that like uh, uh, people might confuse in terms of the greater presentation of the tantra uh, tantra teaching. For example, uh, as we mentioned earlier in the tantra, like uh, in the sutra, uh, in the parameter uh, uh, system, uh, the cultivation of the altruistic motivations, bodhicitta motivation, and the cultivating merits for three great eons. So it means the time is very lengthy, right, in that regard. So whereas a Tantra presentation, that like a, based on this, then they develop the system of the fast track to achieve Buddhahood. So they're very speaking of the fast track, people might get confused that, oh, this might be a shortcut to enlightenment. But there's no shortcut to enlightenment. Mm -hmm. But just like a, that's not what we meant. But I'm going to tell you, go with your retangle and you're going to change it. 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 And you're going to change
and the Shuma Tabanas go with it. Tati Tati Dang Nagi Yamle in a way, to watch him to join him like Hundred Jane and it's power dowdy. So, like some and like yeah, so uh, we made a quite a, we we made a point very clear what kind of motivation we should have at the Sutu of Tantra, right? Now again, just uh, so any practice in a nutshell, any practice that we do at the Sutra or Tantra, the foundation must be on the three principal aspects of the path. So three principal aspects of the path here refers to um, Bodhicitta, as we mentioned, uh, then the right view, of, uh, right view, then third one is renunciations. So we can also reverse this order, renunciation, um, Bodhicitta, and right view. So mm. those three are the uh, three principal aspects of the path. Mm. So now, uh, in terms of the three principal aspects of the path, the first stage is the renunciation. So renunciation is a critical uh, because, so here renunciation refers to, it is a great a sense of awareness within oneself to, el uh, to emancipate oneself from the state of our sufferings. Uh, so unless and until one have a very uh, greater or more insight into a nature of the uh, suffering and this aspire, aspire, aspiring to elevating oneself from the state of our sufferings. So if one doesn't have this kind of aspiration, then very difficult to cultivate or have a space within oneself for the altruistic motivations. So altruistic motivation is only possible for someone who have, who has, or who have the renunciation awareness. So uh, for a beginner, for, for a beginner, uh, uh, for a beginner uh, in terms of the practitioner, right? Um, uh, the, the greater uh, sense of awareness, okay, uh, for a beginner, uh, for a beginner, uh, for, for a beginner, it is very difficult for us to, to experience the a genuine or the real realization of those three principal aspects of the path. Uh, therefore, for a beginner, like a, we are just like a, even at the superficial level, just mere understanding those three, it's, it's important, right? Uh, now, so with this, like if we like, uh, since we don't have, since I don't have this uh, real uh, realization of Bodhicitta, so 
therefore, the more I have a genuine understanding or awareness of renunciation, so the greater I have this understanding of renunciation, that helps to accommodate more, uh, more sense of altruistic, that accommodates a more foundation to construct the bodhicitta. Now, so, so in a in a similar manner, so this the intensity and the uh, the intensity and the purity of uh, bodhicitta really depends on on the uh, firm and the stable foundation of renunciations. The, the firm and the stable foundation is a core to construct a, a, a healthy and genuine uh, a bodhicitta. Mm. So when we say renunciations, and earlier when we mentioned renunciation is a it's a it's a, this a, a genuine awareness of understanding a suffering and aspiring to emancipate oneself from the state of suffering it's uh, uh, so this means like it just uh, so if you look more detail in this landscape so it refers to uh, it refers to understanding the suffering nature of our samsara or the suffering nature of our sagli existence suffering nature of the very existence, the core of our existence. This is one aspect. And the second aspect of this uh, is, uh, is all the pleasures, the pleasures and the enjoyments that we consider enjoyments of a mundane, uh, how do you say, uh, um, uh, in a mundane world that we consider everything pleasurable and enjoyable are indeed a suffering in nature. So understanding of such level of suffering is a crucial to lay out the foundation of renunciations. So in order to have a genuine realization of renunciations, so when we say it's, it's, it's earlier mentioned, it's a, aspiring to emancipate oneself of suffering. So speaking of this angle, suffering, when we say suffering of Obviously, we are not just referring to the suffering of suffering. That's raw suffering. Everybody wants to get, I mean, everybody, everybody doesn't want the suffering, right? They want to, we are not just speaking from that kind of sufferings. So renunciation, it includes every uh, uh, senses, that generates from karma and delusions. So when we say every senses, feelings that generates from karma and delusion are included such as a mundane pleasures that we all consider as a pleasure or a, a pleasant feeling, sensations. All those are in reality contaminated by delusions and karma. Therefore, they are also in reality a subtle form of a suffering which, which to be abandoned. 
which needs to be abandoned. So any product of delusion and uh, karma is a suffering. Therefore, even who achieve a state of uh, uh, state of uh, 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 remind uh, their full attainment of the uh, highest attainment in terms of uh, like a small scopes of practitioner like a uh, yang. This uh, so a, a, a practitioner who even who, like a practitioner who is about to achieve the liberation nirvana right and even that person's a body is a uh is a, a form of a suffering because that body is a product of um, truth of a suffering, which refers to the product of delusion and a karma. So then needless to mention who are below such realizations, uh, then uh, like everything that comes from a, a defilement and karma are a suffering. Mm. So now, like, uh, so when we, like, uh, so uh, we are not advocating that we need to abandon everything from this point of view. <laughs> because, uh, like, uh, rather, it's really important to develop a, a a sense of awareness, pay attention to worldly or mundane uh, sensations. So after renunciation, next stage is a bodhicitta. Uh, so as we mentioned earlier, uh, the, the, the firmer or the more stable the renunciation you have, then that you can you will have a, a, a greater uh, of, of bodhicitta because so again like a, like a, when one have a wish a genuine wish to be emancipated from a suffering then then that person can easily feel and understand just like me other person has the same aspirations they do not want a suffering too that's easy to reciprocate that feeling towards the others, right? So therefore, um, uh, this is really important, like the whole, this, uh, the practice of the bodhicitta is constructed on the very foundation of renunciations. Mm. So now speaking of Buddhicitta, right? Buddhicitta, altruistic uh, motivations, how one can achieve, I mentioned earlier this, yes, the foundation is a 
of uh, renunciation, but just having renunciation is not good enough to achieve bodhicitta. So how can I achieve bodhicitta is relying on the, there are two, uh, two, two known uh, uh, methods where one can rely upon and to achieve uh, a bodhicitta. And those two methods are, first one is called uh, seven cause and effect of achieving bodhicitta beginning with the, uh, recognizing that all sentient being has been one's mother. Uh, that's the one, uh, and there are, there are six more steps. So it's totally called seven cause and effect method. And the second method is, um, second method is originated um, by uh, Master Shandideva's traditions, Shandideva's traditions, and we call it equalizing and exchanging self with another. That's the second method where one can rely upon this method to achieve a bodhicitta. So, out of three uh, principal aspects, the part final one is the uh, right view, right view. So, what is right view, right? So, what is right view? Here, right view refers to, it is a wisdom realizing selflessness. Uh, so, wisdom realizing selflessness, why it is such an important because without having this wisdom, wisdom realizing selflessness, one cannot apply the direct antidote to delusions or defilements, which is the real cause of our problems, right? So in order to remove the suffering, we need to remove the cause, which is defilement. In order to remove the defilement, we must apply the direct antidote, which is wisdom realizing selflessness. Mm -hmm. อันนี้ที่เจอซุงกะเลยอ่ะเนี่ยนิวมาบ่ละอุ้งอสุอันนี้ขาดบ่เนี่ยเจเตเนอปังบ่ชิงเนี่ยที่ตรงนี้ตั
to encounter the development, which is the cause of sufferings. So therefore, this is like a very crucial. So like a, uh, even like a, uh, even so like a, even practitioner who reach, uh, achieves the uh, very high realizations, the realization that on, on the path of uh, un, uh, uncontaminated grounds, three uncontaminated grounds, even those high, even those truly realized, highly realized practitioners, this wisdom is indispensable. Uh, also, like uh, in uh, uh, like in even those of like uh, the uh, uncontaminated parts of grounds, why it is important because this again, even those realize practitioners, they don't even they don't have uh, the uh, defilements of the delusion, but still they have a contaminated wisdom defilement. It needs to eliminate the wisdom defilement, so even do so. They need to rely on the wisdoms, this importance. Now, again, a general, like in a, 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 in a general understanding or the general presentation in terms of the sutra and the tantra, uh, speaking of emptiness, right? Emptiness. So there is no difference, uh, a difference understanding of emptiness, both in terms of sutra and tantra, same emptiness, because that is the ultimate nature of everything, right? There's no difference on that understanding. But what is, what is the difference is, even though this very objective emptiness doesn't have any difference because that's ultimate nature. However, the subjective mind that understands the emptiness makes a difference. So how it makes a difference is, the tantric practitioners who understands the emptiness that this very subject mind that understands subject and emptiness uh, embrace with the great bliss. And because of this element, it, it uh, the, then this level of such level of understanding is uh, more advanced. Uh, then this more advanced, not because of the tantra practitioner understands a different concept or different nature of emptiness. And nature of emptiness, same, but the subjective mind understands makes a difference. Mm -hmm. So, condition, Speaking, speaking of this correct view, right? Uh, so in, uh, in general presentations, we can say everything that exists doesn't have any intrinsic values, doesn't exist inherently. All things that exist, exist simply because of dependent originations. Everything that exists simply may conventionality. So we can use all those fancy words, but at the end of the day, so what it really means to me or it means to us is we have to think about, relate that how this concept can really relate to me and how I can apply this very concept of devote of intrinsic existence to me 
And that is this understanding has to be how I, a sense of very me, the very core of me, how is it me really exists independently or inherently? And applying this very analytical understanding of deconstruction of this solid existence of the self helps to uh, helps to uh, awareness of I really exist independent uh, dependent upon the causes and conditions and this understanding can uh, can reinforce to the world that we experience So so uh, like uh, any actions that we that we do either from the three doors three door refers to your body speech and mind it's 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 really like a uh, it really uh, determines this actions those actions are determined by our mind, right? Because mind governs our body, our minds governs our action. And this mind is, is again controlled by three poisonous for ordinary peoples, right? And, and therefore, like any actions that we perform it's really like a, it's a really like a just engineered by this poisonous poisonous mind of uh, of uh, inherent existence on the self or me or ecocentric existence and because of this me or i creates every problem that we encounter is really a Root, rooted in this ecocentric me. Why me? Right? I. Mm. Uh, therefore, like it just like it, therefore, it's really important to understanding that how this self uh, is devoid of such existence is crucial. Mm. So, like uh, in a nutshell, in the 12 links of dependent origination, we call like uh, uh, ignorance is the root of the 12 links. So, therefore, like uh, this ignorance, ignorance about not understanding the how everything is devoid of existence, is the sole responsible for all our negative actions. Mm. Adi. Lam so like uh, so those are the i mean uh, so this is a brief presentation on the three principal aspects of the path uh which is the i mean uh uh foundation where one can do the tantra, tantra practice so it, uh, as it says uh in one of the texts that uh uh three sometimes three from 
Sometimes this uh, three principal aspects of the path is also known as a common ground. Common ground. Uh, so yeah, common reverse too. Like with this, one can also just common for the tantra practitioners. Even tantra practitioner has to have this, right? So once, when one have this uh, foundation, common practice, it's a uh, strong, then one can do the uh, tantra practice. Tangala. Mm. So now uh, for the tender practice, now we move to the tender practice. So in, in general presentation for the tender practice, uh, for the tantras, the practice, tender practice are classified into four groups, four groups. And the first one is called action tantra, second one called the performing uh, Tantra and third one is called fourth, third one is called yoga tantra and the fourth one is called an yoga tantra. Mm. And the conducive. Who is qualified to be a tender practitioner? To be qualified as a tender practitioner, one must have a, a common practice, where it refers to three principal aspects of the path. And whatever classes of the Tantra one is, one is aspired to practice, one must have a permission into that particular uh, uh, Tantra group in order to uh, practice. Mm. So for example, like I just um, first class, first action tantra is the first class and uh, in, order to do, in order to practice uh, action tantra, uh, in action tantra there are many deities and we, if we, we pick one, let's say pick Tara as a, a Tara is belongs to the action tantra, and in order to practice a Tara uh, teachings, one must have a, 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 a common practice, and on on top of that, one must have a, a subsequent permissions or the empowerment in order to practice her uh, teachings, and likewise, then the each uh, like a like a. Performing tantra, like a, uh, they are like a, they are different, uh, the wajra, different uh, wajras, uh, oh, oh, doring, doring. So there's a doring is the name of a deity, and then one one needs to achieve that deity's uh, subsequent either subsequent permission or initiations to practice. And then for the Anayoga Tantra, which is the fourth one, so any practice, any deity of Anayoga Tantra, one must have the particular deity's initiation or empowerment in order to practice. Mm -hmm. So uh, now, how it to be initiated? It's it's initiated at, uh, through creating Vajra Master, create a, a mandala of the resident, mandala of the deity and its residence. And based on this mandala, one initiates to the disciples. Now, speaking of this mandala and there, there are different types of mandala corresponding to the uh, types of, uh, or the classes of uh, uh, tantra groups. Uh, so the different types of mandalas are uh, the painting man mandala, right? painting mandala or it can be a mandala of 
created by um, uh, like a 3D mandala uh, created through uh, the woods or the other uh, materials, 3D construction mandala and uh, sand painting mandalas, right? Sand painting mandalas or like a mandala uh, for some practitioners, uh, even in the lower tantras, possible to have a samadhi, mandala created through a samadhi meditations, right? So those are, those are the possible for all three lower uh, tantra classes. And the uh, special about uh, the highest tantra is uh, tantra through, uh, um, through a body mandala and the mandala through finger and uh, conventional and ultimate bodhicitta mandala. So those mandala is exclusive to only to Anu Yoga Tantra. So now speaking of the empowerment itself, there are three, there are four types of empowerments. And, and for lower tantras, three lower tantras, uh, man empowerment through ways is only uh, applicable uh, out of four. Any one like that, man, you you check, but na check you that way, na you that you bring you one card in some check. Ah, so um, so then there are different type. Um, yeah, so empower there are different types of empowerment in terms of the actual rituals for empowerments they're different uh types uh, uh such, like, like, yeah different like uh, in terms of uh enumerations that there are different so for examples for action tantra so so it's uh, like a, uh it's action tantra it's it's true this it's true perform through water and the uh, um, water and uh, um, and the crown, water and the crown. You be one last girl, right? You be one man and one tambuni, should the Jubin you want to eat Julia, your check. And it's usually a tea gallery, and it uh, do you to me want to be one other your check. So it's, it's for the action tantra, it's called like a uh. The, the five groups in the first one for the action tantra for three three lowest there's a five uh, five in in terms of enumeration there are five so the first two was the action tantra water and the crown and the three remainings for the uh it's it's called doji tibu miwan law doji gawan tibu wan migi wan law oh no bell uh, initiations Wajja initiations, name initiations. So those are the three remaining out of five. But I'm doing what you say the two, two, and it doji, two, me wants to be one. Ah, so now in terms of like actual, like when we say enumeration, when we count, right? So it's a that the stuff hierarchy is like a, a water in water, count, um, doji. Uh, so, uh, Vajra, Bell, and the name. So those are the five. Adi, Ninju Kata, Juju Chewa. Ninju Julata, they be one of the Mayo, a check, they can't do you loving the one. So, uh, so for the performing tantra, so the first one, so we call like an action tantra, right? Uh, so uh, performing tantra, what is extra for the performing tantra is uh, empowerment through the Vajra master. So this is the Ninja Gyurda, Ninja Gyurda. Ninja Gyurda. No, performing tantra, it's called uh, uh, additional is, previous there's five, right? One extra is, is uh, 
uh, empowerment through a wiser master. Mm. First, first tantra has the only two, water and calm. Second one has the uh, water crown and plus uh, uh bell and name edition. And third one has a, uh, uh, how to say, five plus and a Vajra, uh, Vajra, uh, Vajra Guru edition. That the Chaju Chaju Nila, for you loving one the Maitang, Madu Jana that the Shu got the Chanju Sembe Tomaso Madong Adam Sons Yo Maris. Need you with Jula, for you loving one the Yointa, and need you with you, for you loving one you joke and Valia, and Adam the Yasu Mugu your best. So the first, like, uh, the first two tantras, like, uh, they don't have a tantric vows, rather, Master gives up. Uh, 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 Bodhisattva vows. And for the third, uh, since there is an uh, initiation of Vajra Master, therefore they give a tantric vows. Um, now for the fourth one, Anuyoga Tantra. So before we mentioned that there, like a, uh, in general presentation, there's like a four tantric vows, right? For tantric vow, beginning with the base vow, right? Base vow. So, um, um, so, and the base vow is only applicable to the lower tantra. For the highest tantra, Anuyoga Tantra, all four vows initiated through all four vows. So all four vows refers to those four vows, such as uh, number one, base vow. Second one is a secret vow. Third one is a transcendental wisdom vow. And fourth one is a sig one, a words vow. Words vow, word, W-O-R-D, word vow. And uh, yeah, so those four like a uh, Anuyoga Tantra. So, like, a, like now there's an exception. Like earlier, we said like a, there's a four, right? Four vows as a general uh, to uh, the one one. Then there's an exception to one tantric deity, which is a kala chakra. So Kala Chakra to empower to give this initiated through Kala Chakra, then Kala Chakra deity this uh, is initiated through sixteen vows. There are sixteen vows. Sixteen vows, yes, sixteen initiations. Yes, in sixty initiations. Chibadar Jube Wang Duin Che La. Chibadar Jube Wang Duin Che La. Kongme Wang Shi Che La. Kongje Wang Shi Che. So you don't have to Wang Shi Che. So they are like just like we can skip all those enumerations there. <laughs> mm. I mean, I cannot translate all those like. Uh, mm. Yes, they are they are like they are like so like I mean I mean to translate those technical terms of the like Kalachara Tantra, which I'm not very familiar, so I'm just okay. like a, let's skip those. Just just yeah. yeah first, first, first group they have a seven in total. They call how does it? Chibata Jube one. Like a child like initiations, something like that. Huh? Yeah, they have a total of seven. And then, second one, they call the Kongma. Kongma, the Oma say Kongma. Above initiations. Yeah, above uh, initiation, they have a four. Any grade above, they have a four. And Doji Lovin Dago Chimbe one. It's kind of like a Vajra master in Asian. So total is 16. Total 16 vows, mm. yeah. Keep oh, that mind, keep it. Hey, hey, hey. Any one, you don't want to really, any rap jona, any article, so that we drink karungi, dumdena, and chabainata, uh, kasaba, teacher. 
Don Bosundin Chagir. So for the best one, for the best one, um, for the best one, um, the practitioner should have uh, any, like a uh, practitioner should have any of seven individual liberation vows. Then on top of this, for this, for the, for the sattva vow and tantra vow, it becomes then person that kind of vessel is called a ideal vessel. It can construct three vows. Mm. So, so when we say seven, any of seven individual liberation vows. So when we say seven, so layman vows is included. It's one of the seven. So it means. Uh, if it's a good idea to have layman's vow, and then on, on top of that, you can have the sattva and the hundred vows. So mentioned earlier, like it's just a good idea to have at least one out of seven is a, is mm. a layman's vow. Yeah, cool. Uh, so speaking of layman's vow, there are different types again to type <laughs> lots of enumeration. <laughs> Even for the layman's vow, so there are different types of layman's vow, such as the the highest one is uh is uh um, it's uh brahmacharya, so it's a, very close to uh, like monastic vows. Um, that's yeah. So, so if if that is a difficult, but then one can one can go like a go go below on like a next one is this one can have either like a uphold the ten vows, if not five, if not at least one vow. So you can say like a just layman layman's vow. So at least you must commit. I will uphold one vow, right? So that's the least one. So. Can you a catch here? Did a catch you? Do it. One shoot. One shoot. Ne. Ah, thamzi the domba number tapa song is that catching the data. Thamzi the domba number tapa song ne. Any niamle karasu gorita that shoot chumbu shoot chya matho na ya kahan chya bade any karasu gorita. Okay, so um, now um, participating in any of those vow is one thing, right? But the more important thing is to be sincere about whatever you're going to commit, right? So, so be true to oneself, whatever you are committed, uh, do our best to uphold it. If so, then that person has a greater, greater, uh, has a greater, um, has a greater chances of achieving the realizations, the attainment. Say a Kata Wan Shu, and it comes to the Domba Kale, and it did Mosum Bayina, and Yanga Chambushu. So, whereas on the other hand, just we are eager to participate on those commitments, you took the commitment, you took the vow, uh, 
after taking all those now if you if one becomes how to say it, like a just uh, breaking up all your vows, in, even in a conventional vow, it's not good, right? <laughs> You're breaking up, like a one, if one being insincere to your own actions, right? And the commitments, then then there's a greater chance, then I have to say like that, it has a more dis disadvantage, it's a great, yeah. Mm. Hey, uh, so it says like earlier one won't say this it will do more harm than good mm -hmm. right so because for the each of the vows they call the vows there's a like a primary vows secondary vows so if one is not sincere on upholding those vows most likely one is going to break transgress root vows and secondary vows, which comes with the lots of uh, problems, right? Consequence is a very unpleasant. Mm -hmm. So like, a, therefore, like, a, even therefore, Based on one's capacity, just take the vow based on your capacity and try to uphold it purely, do as much as you can. So with this, even though one is not very intellectually, like a just great capacity, uh, it doesn't matter. Like if as long as one is upholding vow purely, that person has a more conducive to realize the attainment. So like it just like a, it's it's quite very often during teaching Lama tells a story that such practitioner it achieve attainment based on this initiation and for example. And if, like that's, we hear lots of stories, even so during time of Buddha, but they give one stanza of a teaching or one page of teaching empowerment that that practitioner achieved uh, liberation and so on and so, so forth, uh, attainment, right? But the, really like all those underlying message is, all those is, whatever you do, we have to do it with the sincerities, like uphold it. If you uphold it a single a practice, that person has a greater chances. As this practice, then upholding that teaching is more effective in terms of gaining their realizations. Right? It's it's not it's not about what you know. It's about how much you do it. Okay. Right. I don't I don't so like if you remember like I just if you like a, like a almost all uh, empowerment at the end of this ceremony there's a uh, the, there's a uh, uh, there's a point where at the, at, at, during at the conclusion Lama will instruct you to repeat after the Lama uh, and the this repetition, the meaning of that repetition is now from, from, from this onwards, whatever Lama says, so I will do my best to uphold it. So, <laughs> so it's really important to, to just do it, doing it, right? <laughs> So, like, 
को भी खड़े से बोलता जू जी सो चिकने जे घर यही बचे सो चिकमजी सोचे खर से बोलता माता दो छे नहीं So in the tantra, like uh, particularly in 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 uh, in the yoga tantra uh, presentation, it says that if one truly uh, genuinely uh, practice with this utmost sincerity, there is a possibility of achieving enlightenment in a single lifetime. This very lifetime. So, if not after three lifetimes, if not after sixteen lifetimes, so so yeah, Ramji says uh, truly believe in this uh, statement, or truly believe in that statement, which refers to if one truly a practice, right? Then the attainment is sort of like it's it's a possible within our reach. Hmm. So, so so let him go in that. Let's talk about the Jiang Tang. As a beginner, uh, it's very、really、important for us to engage in purification of our negativities and accumulations of our positive merit.、Uh, uh, those are the like a、uh, preliminary requirement for、uh, realizations. Hmm. That today, Oma, that I am like a cheaper chick, did. So one of the main uh, 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 difference between the lower tantra and the anyoga tantra is. Uh, even though in the lower tantra they do mention about possibility of en- achieving enlightenment in a, s- a single lifetime, but in another yoga tantra it mentioned that possibility of achieving enlightenment in a single lifetime at the time of de- degenerations, at the time of five de- de- degenerations, which nowadays considered as a degeneration time. So it means. <laughs> <laughs> जो हम सुन लगता है जो लोग संजय यूएस से आते थे सेसिंग चीमी से रंजन दबोते थे तो सेसिंग इन चीज के बस सुन जो चोट जो कहना चोट बच्चे इन चीज़ में संजय मत हो जी मतलब यहाँ तक तक जो यूनाइट जी चलो तक जाबर वाह चलो जाबर जी तक जो लो जाए इन चीज़ ना लो लिया इन चीज़ में संजय से दिन में होता है तो हम सुन Describe that like it's a possibility of achieving enlightenment in a single lifetime. Here in in this context, here refers to they can prolong the practitioner of those three tantric groups, prolong the lifespan. In other words, they achieve the life of immortality, and then then they accumulate. Merit for three great eons, then achieve in this the body that they have, right? So that's the what,、uh, yeah. That's the instructions in, in, in those teachings. Whereas on yoga tantra, it's like a, in, like a, like a、uh, during the five generation times, lifespan is an gen, average score like a hundred year, hundred years. That's that's like categories. So we fall in the, into that category, and and even so, in this very lifetime, in with the, the five generation times, there is a pos there is a possibility of achieving enlightenment in this very lifetimes. Ah, I'm sure you have never checked the lamp de la yang de chevalier. Ah, you do almost on the ten jig and you do the ten jig and you say that the digital to the sun, the digital to the sun, they say that, and it's that ten jig we sung your mother jig, and it's jig in the door in the. So, and also like a difference in lower tantra and the、uh, anyoga tantras,、uh, the 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 practice itself, like in,、uh, there is a difference. The presentation of the practice, for example, in the lower tantra, they mention that the practice itself mentions that yoga with the sign, 
practice of yoga with a sign and the practice of yoga without a sign and so forth. And whereas like a uh, under yoga tantra, the practice are um, um, the, um, the, uh, the <laughs> so and in, in Anna Yoga Tantra, so the practice of the practice are uh, generation stage and the completion stage. So that the whole the concept and terminology are totally different. In Anna Yoga Tantra, they call it the practice are called a generation stage and the completion stage. Mm -hmm. Number <laughs> So, so like there, then there are other uh, differences, uh, uh, such as uh, in Anna Yoga Tantra, it's called like a, uh, uh, meditating, uh, the, the, the practice of meditation, uh, the practice of meditation with the four uncontaminated holes. Uh, there, the practice of meditation with the four. Un for uncontaminated practices, uh, which is exclusive exclusive to on the Yoga Tantra, those four uncontaminated practices here refers to like a, this, um, like a uh, uh, generating uh, the practice of generating oneself as a deity in the stage of uh, in the stage of your spiritual journey. So it. Practicing the re resultant state. Oh, sorry. Uh, so it's called like a, a full uncontaminated res resultant state on the path. So it refers to even though one is not yet achieved enlightenment, but visualizing uh, oneself into the deity while on the path. So this such a technique is only exclusive to um, Yoga Tantra. Mm -hmm. And also one of the ex again like it's just like a uh, exclusive teaching to Anu Yoga Tantra uh, is uh, taking three kayas into a path. Uh, so again, like it's just uh, another uh, 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 distinction made through the Yoga Tantra and the three law uh, classes is is taking uh, uh, to, to like, uh, taking desire as a path to achieve uh, enlightenment. Mm -hmm. Rejection <laughs> So, like, so even like, uh, uh, even to some extent in the uh, Bodhisattva levels, like, uh, I mean, there, there, there might be some scenarios where Bodhisattva can use as a, a attachment as a as a tools to advance one's uh, practice, 
like or transform that attachment into spiritual path. There, there, there might be some scenarios in even in the, or the sattva uh, uh, level, but in the tantra, they, they, they talk more about, uh, they create more techniques as for like a spiritual technology in terms of the tantra, how one can revitalize the spiritual, uh, 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 like a attachment energies into a spiritual uh, advancement. But those to do so, like it's not, it is not those techniques are not conducive for the uh, beginners. Uh, so, I mean, so we are saying all those mentioning because so just to just uh, uh, just to create a distinction between the Anayoga Tantra and the uh, lower Tantra in terms of the general presentation and those are the those yeah those are the features that we're just simply highlighting. Make say pena our da pena jiran bichi da wajin na jiran bichi ki mua so har so le ti leja ti ya ti kute da kana mana bichi ni parte kati na ba jadi na ta subi ores. So uh, so these days a great a vulnerability for a practitioners to fall into a negative trap of such a intricate and advanced uh, practices. Uh, therefore, Jirambuchi of Lama Tsongkhapa, but he, in, in his very lifetime, I guess just in a, in a the, 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 the normal appearance, right, that we, uh, he, he did not engage in the practice of union with the concert. He, he, he didn't do it so that he showed the example for others to not like just follow into like a since there's a vulnerability so he for the safe safety precautions right he, so he did, he did only at the time of uh, at the intermediate state when he leaves his physical body behind uh, yeah so so there's like i mean just like i said we need to carry extra precautions. Adi kareta, chuzi ondo chuzi tangbol samshayero. Adi di godi badu ende chiga. Sorry. Di godi badu chie. Godi jamro di jonga niya. Adi jamro di ta di chogang unye jume ta di ne di 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 to rob di shushan adi chie ta. Oma shaman di ro. Okay, now let's go back to our main, our main topic, right? The sadhana of the Amitayus. To do this sadhana, first we need to uh, create, we need to do the first thing, first comes first to. Uh, displaying the altar, right? Now you see, please look at the altar. You see the, the big torma. It's called a Brigor. It's a principal torma here. And now you see two two more little cake, right? Torma. And the, those are called uh, friend generation torma and the uh, self generation torma. Since uh, so in this sadhana, we since we don't have a friend generation uh, 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 rituals, uh, therefore you don't need to create a two torma. So here for this we create so offering, offering, yeah, offerings. So, yeah, so torma and the offerings. So like a water bowl offerings, yeah, we create a two, two set. One set is for the French generation, one set is for the self generation. So when we do your own practice in terms of the self generation, Satna, you can create only offerings for the self generations. You don't need to have a two set. Okay? Mm -hmm. Most most how to say most most rituals pretty much the same. Uh, have to have a main uh, how to call it, offering torma. Uh, either 
self-generating trauma or from generating trauma, and then offering uh, how to say what offering offering waterfalls waterfalls yeah so the agam the previous was offering so the offering for the five senses yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so the uh, different is uh, the how to say uh, sub-generations right sub sub-generation the order is a different for the seven generations of left, uh, no, left to right and front generation right to left. Okay. Mm. okay. Now, please look at the uh, uh, uh table, right? Uh, from Rubich's right hand, how you want to lay, how do you want to put the ritual objects in a proper order? Like, if just like there's an order, how you want to. Uh, from the Rumbachin's right hand, first one you see a Damaru, the first. Next to right to left is a bell, and the, then Vajra. There's a pub. Sometimes people just they like a mix the order, bell, Vajra, and the bell. It, it should be bell then Vajra from the right hand side. Okay, from then from the Vajra left here is a uh, uh, inner offerings. We call Nangche inner offerings. So the inner offerings um, for the Ani Yoga Tantra, uh, one should have a uh, there's a uh, inner offering peels. You should there's a peel. That, I mean, you, that it's it's a, it's a made it's made by a monastery or, or some farmer. But I mean, only you are doing, uh, this is only exclusive to Anayoga Tantra. If you don't do Anayoga Tantra, don't worry. So you don't need this bit at this moment. Okay. And then the last one is uh, uh, consecrated rice and others. Okay. Mm -hmm. so this should be proper displacement. I did I did so if you look at the uh, main text right at the page three as a, as a uh, generating refuge and for the chitta but in the text in the actual wordings we missed the but uh, like a, we missed uh, for immeasurables, for immeasurables, later we can add on, right? That it goes in, they say, shoo shoo shoo, go in, what are these in general? Same sure. I always go for refuge to the Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha for the well of all living beings. I shall become unpious. So, this first. Refuge and the Bodhicitta wordings with very clear meanings, very clear. I don't need to give special explanations, right? Okay. I didn't mind Okay, now uh, inner offering. So, I mentioned uh, earlier, I, I used this term, right? Inner offering. The, the practice, practice for inner offerings, inner offerings. Yeah. So, for, 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 like, okay, okay, I will, I will rephrase. For, in general, any the tantric rituals that we do, so it it has a, a four stage. 
Sangwa Jangwa Kiaba Chingiloa. Sangwa means uh, purification. Uh, Sangwa, right? It's Jangwa. Sangwa. Sangwa Jangwa Kiaba Chingiloa. Sangwa. So purification. Jang. Then, uh, huh. Jang. There's a Sangwa Lana. Sangwa Lana. Gek Sangwa. Jangwa Tana Ranchin to a Jangwa. Jeba Senata, the high in a re, Nanjay in a re, Jeba Chingi Lavlandi. You say Tundu Cheni, Chelap Chi. Sangwa. So, first one is purification. So, purifying the environment. Okay. Jangwa is also a, a purification, but this purification is purifying oneself as a, one, uh, um, cleansing one's defilement. Okay. Then, third, third, third one is a Kewa. Then, now, now at the third, you cleanse both environment and the habitant, right? Yourself, you cleanse yourself, you clean the environment. Next is generating, uh, in uh, like a generating into the deity. The, the, for example, in the uh, uh, inner offering, generating in the specific instruction, generating, right? Then find both. Fourth one is that chingilaba is like a, then it's like creating a, a, a blessing refers to then a particular uh, in, uh, such as like this uh, we use one instance uh, generating into a different multicolor light making offerings and they're receiving blessings from the transaction to the universe and so on and so forth so those four stages are very similar to any generic tantric Rituals. Yeah, like uh, inner offering blood or outer offering blood or something, those are pretty much uh, how to say same basic. So it's called how to say Sangwa, Kreen, and Jangwa means Jangwa is related to the uh, self realization. Then Cheba means the actual uh, how to say. Becoming a deities or becoming an inner offering or outer offering or something like that. And then last one's, uh, how to say, last for the whatever object. If you become a deities, it becomes more blessed. Or if you uh, visualize the inner offering, it becomes more blessed or something like that. You can deeper the so for the Vajran bell, the meaning of what is the symbolism of symbolism of bell and Vajra. Bell, okay, this goes with the doji. Doji is the Vajra, it refers to a method. It refers to method, which means the bodhicitta. Bell of wisdom. So union of wisdom and the method, or union of wisdom and the bodhicitta. Mm. Okay. So doji, doji lendu dosne, chugo lava digi ende slinger o. Adi ende slinger de, ju kanta kan chuga goni chugo bato ani tap dewa chambo tang shero tongbo ni e e mebe ngane ani chuga di ani kasuota chungchung yores. Ya mati wa chichira. If you, if you like at the, the placement and how you pick, all has a symbolism, right? So we, we place like a bell vajra. So when you bell vajra, right? So when you pick the vajra first by right hand, symbolize, right? And you pick the bell with the left hand. So there's a create a cross, isn't it? Again, it's a symbolism or union complementing for the chitta with the wisdoms. Mm. And when you like, a, you pick the vajra, you pick the bell, and you hold it throughout your ceremony. It means through through all the ceremony, you you for the chitta and wisdom realize emptiness a union. Uh, embrace or complementing each other or harmonizing each other. Okay. Yeah, I need to do the Tibuki 
Chanju Gisem Tsongyoris. San Tonda Be Chanju Gisem. And also bell and wajra can symbolize the uh, conventional bodhicitta and alternate uh, bodhicitta. Any wrong hajjavati kuyi tamti, dojigi sungi tamti, kata wrong hajjava kuyi tamti, doji tugi tamti, chibu sungi tamti, any wrong hajjayung gumbati chanji tamti. So, like a Generating oneself into the deity, it's a, a, a it's also a symbolized, uh, symbolized of uh, uh, um, a commitment of the body and uh, uh, holding the vajra, the right hand, can symbolize the commitment of the mind, and the left hand holding. The bell symbolize the speech commitment and the union of the um, bell and vajra can also symbolize the commitment of the union. Mudra, mudra, mudra. Oh, then you are a star. They come to the day, come to the day. So, so we we pause for the morning sessions for maybe for some questions. Mm -hmm. yes. We have ten minutes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. What time is it? Angul time shagi lamare. It's almost one o'clock. Oh. Okay. I like it. Like, like, come to. So, so we will, we we can stop for the first session at one. So before that question, and maybe one or two question. Hmm. It's a, it's a, how, how it's much a, we have time for? It's a one now. No. Oh, uh, ten. Okay. So yes, ten ten minutes for the questions. Yeah, yeah we can we can have a more time for the question answer at the end of the afternoon session. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. thank you for your teachings first. Mm -hmm. You said uh, in the beginning of the session that we should practice for the next lifetime, not for this lifetime. But then there's the idea that this highest yoga tantra, we may become enlightened in this lifetime. So I didn't understand those themes yeah, a little cool. bit to could Contradict. I wonder if yeah, you purpose, could explain. How to say purpose or goal? Order to order to how to say Missy Jibu Yamaya, Missy Digi Yamaya, the dig Susu Jibu, Missy Jibu Yamaya, and the TDG, the dig something. So here, like earlier, like the church, yeah, like the TV, 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 Okay, so like earlier we mentioned about uh, the four different possible scenario of adjusting motivations. The first one is that if a person, the reason for doing Dharma practice is to gain a mundane interest of this life, or such as, oh, I'll, if I practice this, then people may respect me, I will get the wealth, or people so just all those things what they want from this teaching is for is the mundane thing for this life. So the wealth and all those for this life, you cannot carry wealth in next life, right? So then this is not even considered as a dharma. So do a dharma practice, how a dharma can determine as a dharma, it's you're doing this, I'm not doing, I'm, I'm doing this practice not for the wealth of this life or fame or reputation or whatever it be. I'm doing this so that I will have a better life for like a So at least I'm doing this so that I will have a higher migration in the next life. Is that then that is considered as a least 
least amount of motivation for doing this practice. So more like as, as you mentioned, like as you, you mentioned, like a, oh, then like uh, you mentioned second aspect of this part is then uh, in Anu Yoga Tantra, then the practitioner it's can achieve enlightenment in this very in this very lifetime. Here refers to practitioner is like as Rinpoche also mentioned earlier, one of the tantric to, to do a tantric practice, creating sense of urgency. I want to achieve achieve enlightenment very now, right now. So not because one's own interest. Be, the reason why the practitioner achieve right now is called right now, it's called a nyo nyo means swiftly, swiftly, refers to right now because the practitioner cannot bear to see the century being suffering for a long time. So for their sake, I want to achieve right now so that I can benefit. So there's no contradiction because <laughs> like, uh, there's no any involvement of one's own interest is not attached to any of those attachments. Thank you, that's uh, clear. Thank you. Next slide. Hmm. Yes, ma'am. So your altar set up includes one forma, the drum, the bell, vajra, and then what are the two silver things on your? It's a, it's a kapala. Kapala? Oh, yeah, we call it kapala. And this one's uh, called the dufo, the consecrate. Uh, Blessing, what call? Right. So, but the, this is like a one silver is called the inner offering. This is in, the inner offering. Inner offering, and when we, we we use this term, right? Inner offering, inner offering. So you put the inner offering stuff. Yeah, we will we we will uh, have our time. Uh, I will uh, explain a little bit about uh, inner offering. Okay. Yeah, in the in the ritual we have uh, the inner offering blessing. <laughs> yeah, the, but the, the second one, the the, the second uh, the silver thing, you put the consecrated rice or other greens or other things, such as rice or green other greens that needed for the uh, ritual ceremony. Yeah, all everything's uh, related to the visualization, not as the how to say, how to say, not as the regular toma to be. If this Toma events uh, we uh, uh, offer, even even Lamala offer me, I cannot eat, right? <laughs> I'm not gonna eat. So that uh, doesn't make sense. So it uh, has to be uh, how to say uh, ritual through the visualization. All those items that we display ultimately add for the practitioner for visual representation or the visual symbolized yeah. symbolic meanings that can ultimately enhance your visualization or your meditation yeah, yeah. but all those comes along the way when we each explains this yeah uh, maybe a last question huh um this is uh, about the renunciation that, oh. that we as our basis and it sometimes can be confusing, I think, um, especially to maybe Westerners or to myself. I, as we understand now, you're speaking of a renunciation, not necessarily as the vows, monastic vows, where we renunciate many worldly things, but are we speaking that the renunciation of the wrong view, the renunciation of our ignorance, is, is that the basis of renunciation? Or do you have some way to explain what it is we are abandoning. Yeah, yeah. Renun renunciation, renunciation doesn't mean uh, whatever we renounce, we have to abandon right away. But we have to have a basic understanding whatever we use or whatever we uh, experience or house, water, zinc, everything, family, everything, we have to have a, a how to how to say, based in our mind, we have to have an understanding that not uh, 
how to say, real, uh, how to call it, real pressure or real, hello, that's what they make it, they write in my inbox, when they will get it. Go Lamsam Pang, Sigur Marata, the Nelson Chen and Lamsan, the Kambai Melche, and Lamsan Hamlet, the Moda Melche, the Data Sigur Marta, you know, same thing with Dingy, Kanda, D, any Korea Pinzo, Jim, Mato, Jim, to David, they were to me, some something. You don't send a year by any dish, Kavash Rabbi. So, so here, like, okay, so, uh, uh, re renunciation here, uh, here ultimately refers to you, you are renouncing on the very idea of like a, a, a very idea of idea on the of ple of pleasures of a samsara that we that we uh, that we are inclined to to see as something uh, uh, very uh, objective and a permanent that just in right but but in reality all those pleas pleasures a joy in the samsara are ultimately a suffering therefore renouncing this craving and uh, attachment towards those things, um, renouncing on those uh, craving and attachment for the des desirable or the ple uh, pleasurable uh, sensation is a renunciation. Mm -hmm. So it would be um, accepting that the view and understanding the um, samsaric nature of all of these pleasurable things and all the things that we might grasp or be attached to is, is that so yes renunciation yes like you are you are going in that direction yes yes here refers to <laughs> so so here it says like a Renunciation, ultimately, the understanding of renunciation has to be based on, based on anything that derived from samsara, right? It's, it's actually, it's, it's empty of, empty of, how to say, it's a, there's no essence from those uh, happiness, we, we call it. Even though we call it happiness, but in reality, disguised in suf uh, uh, suffering. As long as all those are product of uh, defilement and the karma, as you mentioned, right? Realizing the emptiness of those things. Yeah, it's very, it's really, how to say, very re related. Yeah. Yes, you, they, there's a you, relevance, yes. Yeah, if you understand that the emptiness or nature of things, then how to say? That person has a how to call that a way, how to say, way more understanding of the uh, renunciation, too. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can. It, it, Yeah, you can ask. Mm. We'll meet back at two o'clock. I'm, uh, I'm delighted everyone is here. Hope to see you all at two o'clock. Rimshi has so much to impart, and I know we'll all be in time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>